Okay, SmackDown, SmackDown, SmackDown. Wow, I don't really think it's going to be a lot to talk about this show. Then again, I forgot this was a go-home show before Money in the Bank this Sunday, but obviously there is something going around on SmackDown, and um, given to what I've seen on this show, kind of tells me who is going to win and who is going to lose on Sunday. But, <laughs> excuse me, but there was also a return tonight and several other things going on in this show, so... Had a couple things going on. I, I can say that. But overall, this is the go-home show before Money in the Bank this Sunday, okay? So, what do we kick it off? We're at the beginning of the show, instead of an intro, or for the intro, but instead of an intro, though, obviously this show is taped. They showed Mandy Rose pretty much getting ready for her match. Otis pretty much went in to check on her, asking if you want to, you know, if you want to, if she needs to come out with her, but um, she pretty much told him to go focus on uh, Money in the Bank for Sunday. She can do this on her own tonight. Um, Sign Deville was also getting ready as um, Ziggler walked up saying, you ready? And pretty much, yeah, she says she's ready. She's ready to unleash five years of beatings on uh, Mandy tonight. Because uh, right at the beginning of the show, we get Mandy Rose versus Sign Deville. Um, not bad and, and a kind of expected outcome. Obviously, this feud is not over yet. Uh, yes, well, a lot of trash talking, uh, Sonya pretty much taking Mandy down several times, pretty much saying, come on, let's do this, and, you know, saying, you know, call her embarrassing, even taking off her fake eyelashes, she tore off the eyelashes that she had her submission hold and threw them, but, you know, they pretty much got to the outside and reined in, uh, Mandy threw her across the announce table, into the steel steps and back into the ring, she went for her V-trigger move, but, um, Pretty much DeVille ended up reversing it and um, pretty much getting a roll up on her. In a way, focus on Mandy's bad legs since, you know, she got hurt last week, um, you know, her attacking it. But basically a roll up with Sonya DeVille winning. Obviously, this feud is still going to continue. And I'm sure they probably will save this for a pay-per-view. Obviously, not Money in the Bank this Sunday, but they're probably going to save something bigger uh, for this. But this was good. It continues the feud. Uh, so I wasn't mad at that. Uh, next, Lucha House Party and New Day versus Miz Morrison and Forgotten Sons. Basically, eight-man tag, because all four of these teams will be facing each other in a fatal four-way for the tag team titles. And a tag team match that went three commercial breaks. Uh, this was just very time-consuming, uh, let me say that. Match wasn't bad or anything. I'm sure everybody got their shit in and whatnot. I did like the county ending when, um, Dorado hit a Poison Rana on... Morrison, which looked like he got to bounce his head um, off of it, and, you know, Miz pretty much ran in and hit the skull crushing finale on him, which obviously tells me that, you know, Miz and Morrison aren't winning the titles, because I know they took out the New Day outside, the Forgotten Sons with that power bomb thing, so, it, like I said, the, the tag match was okay and everything, but this just really gets you excited for a Fatal 4-Way tag team title match uh not really but we'll see what we'll see what happens from it but i kind of see new day still retain the titles i don't see ms morrison winning them lucha house party is just way past my mind and the forgotten sons just got there lest i'd be surprised if they even put the belts on them but you know right now i just see new day still walking away retain the title so i don't really see nothing new come from that but yeah not a bad tag match it just it just ate up a lot of time it took Three commercial breaks. Nearly went 20 minutes out there. So, obviously, they're just trying to stretch time out. Uh, they went to Corbin in the back. Um, pretty much talking about his tag match tonight. Um, you know, being with Cesaro and Nakamura. Probably about there being assassins. That he's going to win Money in the Bank again and become King Money in the Bank. But next, we have Renee Young in the ring. Pretty much getting um, ready to interview Jeff Hardy, who was finally back after four weeks of promo videos and chapters and whatnot he came out unfortunately it wasn't to no more words i actually kind of thought that was he was going to come out to that he confirmed it but maybe he wants to save it for something bigger right now i actually kind of wanted him to come out to that song but they're gonna save it for another time but you know jeff hardy came out at jeff hardy talking about he's a survivor you know pretty much being back you know just you know being back and everything and talk about the fans you know Still be able to hear their voices and everything. He thanked them for sticking through his entire career. But he said, what's next for Jeff Hardy? He said he wants to do some one more big run before, you know, he leaves WWE and everything. I'm sure we'll know what happens when he's done with WWE and where he'll go. But, um, you know, Jeff Hardy, you know, thanked everybody for sticking throughout his career. And he wants something big. He wants something uh, just really big to happen. And Sheamus was watching in the back. He says, is this what you waited four weeks for? 
just for you to come out here and complain. He just was backstage and said, it's like, this is all we've been waiting for, huh? But, you know, she- Sheamus was pretty much headed on his way out. Jeff Hardy called him out. He was surprised that he hasn't, you know, came out yet. So he called Sheamus out. And um, pretty much uh, Sheamus came out then. He called Jeff uh, an adrenaline junkie. And, you know, you need more one more swig from the bottle and everything. Because, uh, listen, no one's here to give it to you, all right? Listen, um, you think you can get anything because you're a legend and nobody cares about you. Listen, you've done a lot in this company and in this business, but look at all the releases, the no-shows, the suspensions, all this, all the second chances you get, okay? We're all tired of this. You get too many chances around here. Jeff Hardy called him a, he called him a hater then, uh, you know, for someone that knows so much about him, but Prima says that, he said that Seamus, <clears throat> you know, what did he tell him? Um, pretty much says uh, Seamus was a hater. Jeff, not Jeff, but Seamus pretty much says, you know, he's not a hater. I respect you and, you know, all those video packages you've had for the past few weeks now that everybody knows. Jeff Hardy's going to have another failure right around the corner, okay? Because uh, right now, uh, Seamus, uh, he's been doing things for the past few weeks now, taking out guys. Uh, not much competition, just some jobbers, but uh, he pretty much says that the flame you know, that you've been having for so long... It's gonna, it's gonna go out, and he's going to put it out. Sheamus pretty much came out to, to the ring to attack Jeff Hardy, but Jeff ended up hitting him with a big whisper in the wind. Got some hang time, by the way. Twist of fate, swan time bomb, and um, Jeff got out the ring, and Sheamus pretty much looked pissed. So, uh, not bad. Uh, I did like the promo from Sheamus pretty much saying, you keep coming back, you get all these chances, but he's about to stop him. Obviously, this match won't be the pay-per-view, but... Um, Money in the Bank, but they are setting up some for it. I have, this is one of the only things I kind of do like on SmackDown is the Jeff Hardy and Sheamus thing. So, uh, that, that hasn't been bad for what it is right now. Uh, but next we had Braun Strowman come out. Talked about when he first got to the company. You know, he did debut with the Wyatt family, but he doesn't owe them his success. And he pretty much called Bray Wyatt deranged for thinking so. And him and his puppets want to try to give him gifts and everything. But why don't you say it to his face? So we got Bray Wyatt, the Funhouse Bray Wyatt, not the Fiend. And Wyatt pretty much, you know, all he wanted him to say he was sorry, okay? Braun said he didn't owe him anything, but Wyatt said that is not true. And you know it, okay? And pretty much Strowman went on. Listen, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna give him what you owe on Sunday, okay? And Wyatt pretty much says, I do know you because I know all my creations, he says, and you know, you don't belong out here. You belong with the rest of them. All right? And um, he wanted him to come back home and basically giving him the sheet mask. Okay? Because he tried to give him a sheet mask. And Wyatt Prima says, you know, I need to get the Universal Championship back. All right? I need. So, listen. Uh, I just need it back. And, you know, the title needs to come home. And like I said, he tried to give him the mask. The puppets then said, come home, come home, come home. Strowman says, I am already home. And I'm the universal champion. And uh, listen, uh, you know why you can keep that for Sunday? Because I'm still, I'm sick of playing with the puppets. And he says, uh, bye, I'll see you on Sunday. And Wyatt pretty much told Strowman, you're going to be sorry. I tried, I really tried, but you're going to be very, very sorry. Now, bad segment i still think Strowman is gonna lose the title but then again that depends on what version of wyatt he's facing he's either facing the funhouse wyatt or we're getting the fiend or if we're just in the funhouse then Strowman will possibly retain and then probably to the next whatever pay-per-view it is it'll be Strowman versus the fiend instead of regular bray wyatt okay but um <clears throat> you know it's not <clears throat> much I could say from this feud other than, you know, Strowman was in the Wyatt family, but I still think he's going to lose the title, but then again, I, I probably won't happen anyways. I just still keep calling Strowman a transitional champion for a reason, but uh, somehow, some way, I feel like it's going to be some screwy finish or Strowman will go over if it's not the Fiend, okay? So we'll see what happens from that. Uh, Sasha and Bailey went against Tamina and Lacey Evans. Um... I can't expect what was going to happen out of this tag match. It wasn't bad or anything. Um, it was a little bit better. Uh, I, because, uh, what was the finish? Uh, 
Lacey Evans hit the woman's right on Sasha and then Bailey knocked out in the ring. Tamina hit her with a super kick and then a Samoan drop for the win. Obviously, Tamina is not going to win on Sunday. I already know. I see a lot of people already have a problem with her push. Um, I've seen a lot of this on the internet lately, pretty much coming at her about why the push she is getting right now. Then again, I don't know. But then I even said to myself, you ain't got a lot of people to work with right now or what woman they haven't ran through yet. So even I have to say, like, you know what? Just give, I, even I'm just going to say, we'll see where it goes with Tamina. I'm not, I didn't say it was going to be that good, but I said I'm willing to give it a shot, I guess. But then again, Tamina hasn't done something so much and so long, um, you know, it's hard to say. Yeah, I just find it funny when people say, oh, the only reason why she's still here because, you know, uh, what Jimmy Snuka and you know that they covered up for his you know his uh, alleged and I say alleged for reason alleged murder or what and that uh you know if I guess a lot of people have seen that dark side of the ring people say, <laughs> wonder why she still has a job here and should uh, be released I see that all the time but I said I don't think that has to do with what whatever reason she has in the company right now or why she's still here because um I don't know okay but we'll see what happens with Tamina um you know for Sunday I don't think she's winning the title in general okay let me get that out the way right now she's not winning her winning tonight she's not winning the, t the match but the tag match was okay I I will say that but like I said before I don't know any other woman that could have just you know went through with I don't know what other women that could have you know went against Bailey unless they haven't used them already but hey I don't know um next though they talked to Dana Brooke and Carmella, how they're going to be in Money in the Bank. Uh, pretty much, you know, saying that Mella is money. Money and whatnot. Because um, she's going to win Money in the Bank again. They pretty much took a tour of the WWE headquarters in a video package. I guess where they're all going to be fighting from. And this entire building, from the cubicles to the lunch, um, what was it, the cafeteria. The executive offices, the conference rooms, pinball machines, or whatever the hell is in the... WWE headquarters in Connecticut, okay? So, we'll see what happens from that. Uh, next, they showed uh, WWE Hacker, or I still think it's Mustafa Lee, or wannabe Sammy Callahan take a, a steal his gimmick type of deal, okay? Um, pretty much, they had a voicemail. Pretty much, he's going to be coming back real soon and trying to expose all these people. I still think it's Mustafa Lee. But in the main event, we got um, the Corbin Coalition 2.0 right there. Corbin, Nakamura, and Cesaro versus Daniel Bryan, Drew Gulak, and a mystery partner, which was Otis. Um, the, the tag match was all right, but then this kind of was after that didn't make a lot of sense. Okay, the tag match was whatever. Corbin got the deep six on Gulak for the win, so that's kind of whatever. But then they had like another five minutes in the show, so they all start fighting then. And, um, you know, Bryan and... Gulak and Otis and all them, they all fought to the backstage, Corbin gets the ladder, climbs up the money in the bank, which obviously not the real briefcase, but people have done that before, because we already we know what a real briefcase is, the Titan Towers, but, you know, Daniel Bryan and comes in with the ladder, then Otis comes in with the ladder, which he kept collapsing, because he kept trying to clam climb it, because he's so big, the ladder breaks and everything, but Corbin took him out then after that. And, you know, Brian had another ladder, but once again, you know, Corbin took him out and knocked him off of it. It pretty much climbed it and won the briefcase. Basically tells me right now, Corbin's not winning money in the bank. So I think we could all sit there and say that right now. He's definitely not winning after what we just saw. But do I think it does look a little bit, you know, kind of silly that we know these aren't even the real briefcases and that um, they're at Titan Towers right now, so, and, and, you know, we've seen it before where people grab the briefcase before in a go-home show or anything, but this time is that it's at a headquarters, okay, it's not in a wrestling ring or it's not here right now, so I can see why people thought it looked a little bit silly tonight, okay, but, you know, the, the tag match was whatever, I will say that, but, you know, I just look at all three of these guys. Obviously, they're not winning the Money in the Bank. I really don't believe. The only people I see winning Money in the Bank is either AJ Styles or Alistair Black. That's who I see winning out of all this, okay? So, yeah, Corman went, you know, climbing a briefcase. Obviously, he is not winning Money in the Bank. So, you know, overall, SmackDown was SmackDown, which whatever this go-home show was, which, like I said, for Money in the Bank tonight and other title matches, like, the, of course, the Universal Wyatt and... Strowman or the women's title between Bailey and Tamina. 
or the tag titles with all four teams out there. Where the Usos, by the way, I think one of them is hurt last time I read. I'm not really sure, but so what I've been reading, one of them is hurt right now. I think that's why they got all these teams doing this right now. But, um, yeah, that's all I can say from the SmackDown side of the show. But, listen, I will be back Sunday. I will be there for um, Money in the Bank. I will have a review. I don't know how this is really going to go all the way. I expect this to be very trippy, of course. And, again, it's supposed to have another cinematic feel to it the last time I heard about. So, it's most likely, as I said before, it's most likely going to look like the Boneyard match or the Firefly Funhouse. We'll see what happens when they fight through the corporate headquarters, but I will be there to review the show this Sunday, all right? So that's all I got to say about SmackDown tonight. So other than that, comment, subscribe, tell me what you think about the show. Follow me on Twitter at HoodieKnight890. Check out any other reviews um, that are up right now. Hey, you know, someone brought this to me before I go real quick. Um, Should I go back to doing live reactions? I haven't done that in a while, and I stopped for a reason. Um, I'll be able to do a computer space, but now I like I want to come back and do it. But now for some reason I'm having some problems with a lot of my videos online lately. Apparently, I guess copyright laws or whatnot. Even though these are videos I were taken maybe four or five fucking years ago, it's kind of funny now that uh, they want to try to block my shit or copyright. I'm not gonna go into detail who, but it's kind of funny that. My some, some of my reaction videos now from the past, long in the past, like 2014, 13 past, and now they're kind of getting fucked with right now. Mostly by WWE, but I, I don't know. I don't know. And then again, it's not like I was never showing the show. It's just me watching the show with the audio in the background. So I don't know what's going on with that, but... I don't know. I'll have to take care of that problem later. Maybe I need to change the private. Should I change the private so nobody can't do nothing about it? Because I think that's what I have to do and put it on a public setting then if I have to change the private. But that's all I got to say about that. But yes, I will be there this Sunday for Money in the Bank and we will have a review. Okay? So maybe I maybe I should do live reacts of this corporate headquarters thing. May have a good laugh out of this too. We'll see what happens. But most likely I could just be coming a regular review. So I'm out of here. I'll see you guys later. See you Sunday. Peace.